So first up, Cardano's blockchain technology sets it while you're in the fourth industrial revolution in Georgia. And when I first saw the title of this, I'm like, all right, well, uh, that piques my interest. How is Cardano going to do that? And it all kind of comes down to there was a live stream with Charles Hoskinson and the things that he said. And I was like, is he really doing that? And I'll get into that in a second. But here's the, here's the whole story. The former prime minister of Georgia, Mamuka, I th Mamuka, Bakhtadze, I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Blockchain uh, is set for the fourth industrial revolution. And he states, the first industrial revolution was powered by the steam engine and the fourth will be powered by blockchain. That's a game changer. Bakhtadze uh, revealed that Georgia is working with Cardano's Charles Hoskinson through IOHK to implement a special blockchain based education program in the country. He further states, currently we are implementing a very important project in the education sector together with IOHK and Charles Hoskinson, who is a very good friend of Russia, together with the Ministry of Justice and Minister for Education. We're implementing the Credentials Verification Project. The team is using a Cardano-backed blockchain for this. And I've always said, in business, it is not what you know, it is who you know. And I got to give kudos to Charles Hoskinson and the rest of the group for reaching out or just being a part of that discussion, not just businesses and corporations, but entire countries and who knows, maybe even large cities and nations, I don't know. But uh, this all came back to a live stream that he did. And when he said this, I was like, I don't know if he's full of it, but uh, we'll take a look. So this was on September 3rd when everything had crashed mostly in part thanks to DeFi, I will say that. And uh, Charles gives two great pieces of information here. The first is, is a minute long. He talks about COVID-19 and what's going to happen and DeFi and the fear and reality. And it was pretty interesting. Um, and actually, I tweeted this, or I actually sent this out on my YouTube uh, as far as the community to watch this video because it was very well said. So there's two parts of this. There's that. And he talks about the different people that him and his organization talks to. So let's take a listen. It's a rough day today, and that markets are terrible, down 20% for most people. And every now and then I talk about price. I rarely do. Uh, but in general, let's talk about the macro. You know, um, crypto is a unique phenomena. It's a unique thing. And these are crazy times. Uh, I remember just a few months back when coronavirus first came out, and we saw basically everything just bottom out. Everybody went crazy. They went to cash. All asset classes just went to hell in a handbasket. Uh, and I did a video and I said, guys, our best days are ahead of us as an ecosystem and as an industry. And what happened? Everything got better over time. People started getting more optimistic. You know, the reality is that we are seeing an old industry die right now. The legacy financial system. So that's sage advice. And it's true. I mean, he was right. He was right. Because back in, the, in those days in March, the sky was falling. Everything was going to collapse. It was the end of cryptocurrency digital assets. It was just awful, right? That was what a lot of people said. Of course, we know better because we have strong hands. We're like, you know what? This is a great buying opportunity. However, I talked about it in yesterday's video where I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I didn't buy as much as I should have back then. So with this dip that's going on right now, I am increasing my dollar cost average strategy as far as like what I buy because I know it's only going to go up. And in this situation right here, Charles is completely correct. He's like, you know what? It's going to go up and this is going to be just a, just a blip on the radar. And sure enough, here we are. So I know some people uh, are not a fan of the Cardano um, project. Some people love it. Some people love Charles. Some people hate Charles. That's just how it is in business. That's just how it is in life, right? I personally like him. I like Charles. I like how he, you know, how he gets things done. And uh, I like the whole project and I've invested heavily into it. Only time will tell. I could, uh, you know, it could go to zero. <laughs> Who knows? Nobody knows. But um, this next part is what threw me for a loop. And I'm like, I wonder if this is really, you know, an, an embellishment. I mean, I'm sure he talks to these people, but I'm, I'm wondering if it's an embellishment of, of more of what's, what's going on. And it is echoed in the story we're just talking about right now. So let's take a listen. Yeah, uh, with some people this morning, and we talked about revolutionizing the healthcare industry and getting things uh, better in terms of supply chains. I had another meeting with a, a soon to be former Wyoming state representative about how we're gonna get governments to adopt blockchain technology. I talk every day to governors, heads of state, Congressmen, senators, 
mayors of cities, sometimes very large cities with millions of people. And they all say the same thing. We need help. We need solutions. We're damn tired of the way that the old system is running. And you know what? If we don't solve it, a lot of people are going to get hurt or continue to be hurt. Here's why Cardano will succeed. It will succeed because of the connections they are building right now, the people that they are talking to, the railroad track that they are laying, and everything that's going on in the background, all the different hard work that's going on, I'll put my money on Cardano. Again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And if you're talking to those types of big people, the ones that can move mountains, the governments that can move mountains, it's a pretty good bet. I would bet on that. Speaking of which, I should probably buy some more Cardano today. Anyhow, back to the story. So moving down, Georgia as a blockchain-powered regional hub for business, tourism, and finance. First of all, where is Georgia? Well, Georgia is a small Eurasian country that borders Russia to the north, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Armenia to the south, and is often referred to as the crossroads where Western Europe meets Asia. So a little tiny place, uh, not too big. So why is this so important? Well, when I first read it, I'm like, it wasn't really exciting to me because I'm like, it's just a small country. But I remember there's a book that I had picked up not too long ago. It's called The Nomad Capitalist. And what they talk about is it's not about looking towards these countries that are traditionally something for, for expats to go to. The Puerto Ricos, the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands. Those, it goes, those types of places are not going to appreciate you as much. Look to the countries or states or regions that are actually building up and are looking looking to progress themselves by adopting emerging technologies. That's exactly what it says in Nomad Capitalist. And I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? This could be one of those places. So if you're looking for the next big country to uh, really just explode in, in, on the global stage, maybe Georgia is one of those places. And what are the projects that they're using? Cardano. Anyhow, Bakhtadze's speech during the 2020 World Economic Forum's virtual summit held in Davos highlighted the limitless potential presented by the blockchain technology, especially in the public sector. The overall vision is to establish Georgia as a regional hub for business, trade, tourism, and finance through innovation and partnership with key stakeholders. The country has a population of 4 million. It's heavily dependent on tourism, which attracts up to 9 million per year. Apart from plans to develop a national digital currency, the country will also explore blockchain solutions to attract visitors, especially after the coronavirus period. The countries who will be more supportive of digital currencies and cryptos will have a very significant competitive advantage in the 21st century. Georgia cannot afford to miss this opportunity. And it's just, if you look back in history, the different countries that have embraced technology, especially for these industrial revolutions, have been the ones that are not just the conquerors, but have been the economic leaders throughout the global community. And if we take a look at cryptocurrency digital assets, and there's one more actually, artificial intelligence, those types of countries that embrace those new technologies will be the forefront moving forward. So I will put my money on that. And also the different projects that are being talked to, such as Cardano. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.